Alrighty guys, we are adding and subtracting fractions. Now last week we talked about converting improper fractions into, I mean mixed numbers into improper fractions. We're going to have to do that again. So I'm just going to review that um, just a little bit. So if I have 3 and 1 fourth, remember you multiply the denominator and the whole number. So I have 4 times 3, which is 12, and then you add that to the numerator. So I'm going to add 1, so that's 13, and then remember it sits right back down on your starting denominator. So that's 13 over 4. I got that glare. Sorry, guys. Okay, so 3 and 1 fourth is the same thing as 13 over 4. So let's say that your problem is this. Let's say that we have 3 and 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. Okay, so that's my problem. 3 and 1 fourth plus 2 thirds. Drop my pens. Okay, we've already changed the mixed number to an improper fraction. So that's 13 over 4. So this is 13 over 4 plus two-thirds. Now, with adding and subtracting fractions, there's a couple steps you need to follow. Steps, I'm going to write steps right here. So step one, we are going to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. That should not be a surprise. That's always our first step when we're dealing with fractions. Okay, so that's always our first step. That hasn't changed. All right, our second step is we are going to find the common denominator. Okay, we're going to find the common denominator. Now, to do that, you're going to look at your denominators. Okay, so look here. What you're going to do is you're actually going to take this denominator, which is a 4, and you're going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by that denominator. Then you're going to do the same thing with this denominator over here. So your third step is to multiply the numerator, which remember is your top, and the denominator which is your bottom, okay, to multiply the numerator and the denominator of each fraction by the opposite denominator. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by this denominator, and I'm going to multiply this fraction, or this fraction, by this denominator. So what is that going to look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to show you. So that's going to look like this. So I'm going to take this 3, and I'm going to multiply it over here. So I'm going to have 3 over 3 times that 13 over 4, okay? Then plus now I'm going to take this 4 over here. So now I'm going to have 2 over 3 times 4 over 4. 
So you multiply the numerator and the denominator of each fraction by the opposite denominator. So for this first one, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by three, because that was the opposite denominator. And this one, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by four, because that was the opposite denominator. So that's what that means, okay? Then your next step, which I'm gonna have to do our camera down a little bit because I'm running out of room. Step four. Okay, multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. Oopsie, this long can't spell. Denominator times denominator. Okay, so right here, 13 times 3 is 39 over 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 2 times 4 is 8, over 3 times 4 is 12. These better be the same. If they're not, we have issues. Okay, so these have to be the same. Once you've done that, step 5, add your numerators. and you keep denominator the same. Okay, so you add the numerator and you keep the denominator the same. And I know I'm starting to abbreviate, but I'm running out of room here. So 39 plus eight is 47. And I keep the denominator the same which is 12. And then your very, 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 very last step, and I'm gonna write it right here. Step number six, convert back to a mixed number. Okay, that's your last step, is to convert back to a mixed number. So remember how we do that. I'm going to slide my board a little bit so I can do it up here so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to divide this. So how many times does 12 go in to 47? Okay, if that was 48, it would be 4, but it's not. So that means that 12 goes into 47 three times. 12 times 3 is 36. When I subtract, that gives me 11. Now, hopefully, y'all remember from last week what we did next. So, remember, this is your whole number. Okay, that's your whole number. This is your numerator. That glare's back in it. And then this is your denominator. Okay, so whole number, numerator, denominator. So 47 over 12 is 3 and 11 over 12. So this would be my final answer. Okay? So you start by converting the mixed number to an improper fraction, and we end by taking the improper fraction back to a mixed number. Alrighty, so that's your first example. Now, of course, we're going to do more, but that's just your first one. All right. Let me 
see how this is going to erase here. Not great, but I think we can still see. We'll see. Without me having to clean it completely. All right, so let's do another one. So let's say that I give you um, three fourths minus two and one third. Nope, let's not do third. Let's do two and one fifth. Okay. Now the first one was just both of them were positive. We didn't have to worry about sign rules. This one we do. I just wanted to remind you about stuff and getting a common denominator. So what is our first step? Our first step, we changed. We have to change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So remember, we multiply here and we add here. So 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. So we have 3 fourths minus 11 over 5. Okay? So that's where we are there. Our second step is to find a common denominator. So to do that, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator in the opposite fraction. So that means that I'm going to multiply this fraction by 5, top and bottom. And that means that I'm going to multiply this fraction by 4, top and bottom. Okay? So this gives me 5 over 5 times 3 over 4 minus... 11 over 5 times 4 over 4. There you go. All right, so now our next step is we multiply numerators. We multiply denominators. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. Minus. 11 times 4 is 44. 5 times 4 is 20. So now we have a common denominator. Now we simply combine our numerators. Does our denominator change? No, it does not. So my denominator is going to be 20. Whatever the numerator is, that's what I got to figure out. The denominator's already figured out. When I figured it out up here, when I found the common denominator, that's my denominator. So my denominator is 20. So that's one thing I've already figured out. Now, 15 minus 44. Remember when we were talking about sign rules? You have a couple questions I said. Are my signs the same? I have a positive here. I have a negative here. Are my signs the same? No. Therefore, I don't add the numbers. What do I have to do? My signs are different, so I have to subtract. So I'm going to do 44 minus 15. So that's a 14. That becomes a 3. So 14 minus 5 is 9. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now, is that 29 going to be positive or negative? Well, let's look at our numbers. Which one's bigger? If we're counting, which one's bigger, 15 or 44? That's right, 44. Because as I'm counting up, 44 is, the big, is bigger than 15. It takes me longer to get there, right? So this is going to be negative 29. So it's negative 29 over 20. Can I leave it like this? Looks good to me. No, unfortunately, I cannot. I have to convert it back to a mixed number. So, I have 20 on the outside. I have 29 on the inside. Now, I already know that it's going to be negative. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, I know what's negative. I don't have to worry about the negative. Now I just got to figure out what goes where. So how many times does 20 go into 29? Last time I checked, once. 20 times 1 is 20. When I subtract, 29 minus 20 is 9. So remember, this is your whole number. This is your numerator. And this is your denominator. All right, so my whole number is one, my numerator is nine, and my denominator is 20. So my final answer is negative one and nine over 20. Okay, so there it is. All right, I'm going to do one more, and then that's going to be it. And then you'll see me in our um, little bit with the worksheets, your assignments. All right, so last one for this lesson. Let's say I have a negative four, what do we want to do? Let's do four thirds minus a negative hmm. yeah, that's already an improper fraction. Minus, minus a negative one and one half. We'll do it that way. All right. So this one's already an improper fraction. So that's one less you have to do. Now we do have to convert this one. So remember, we're going to multiply here. So 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. And then all over that 2. But now, don't forget, we've got to deal with this. So right now, this is what we're looking at. That's what we've got right now. And I did this one on purpose to remind you about something. Can we have a double negative? Just like in English, can you use a double negative? No, we cannot have a double negative. What happens when you have a double negative? They cancel each other out and they become what? Positives. Okay, so what we technically have now is negative four thirds plus three halves. Now we've got all that handled. Now we can do our common denominator. What are we going to multiply by? We're going to multiply this fraction by two. So this one's going to be by two. And then the other one we're going to multiply by three. Okay. So we have 2 over 2 times negative 4 over 3 plus 3 over 2 times 3 over 3. All right, now 2 times negative four is negative eight. Two times three is six. Plus three times three is nine. Two times three is six. So we have our common denominator now. So we know our common denominator is six. Now we gotta figure out what goes on top. Are my signs the same? That's the first question you ask yourself. This is a negative. This is a positive. Are my signs the same? Yes or no? No. So therefore, I'm not adding. I'm subtracting. So I'm going to do 9 minus 8, which is 1. Now, 
Is it going to be a positive one or a negative one? We look at our numbers. Which is bigger, eight or nine? Nine is bigger. Well, my nine is positive, so that means that one is positive. So it is one over six. Now, that's nice. I don't have to convert anything. So my answer is one over six. Okay. All right. So that's it for this one. You'll get a little bit more when we look at your uh, worksheet in your lesson. All right, guys. See you there.